Are you getting popping sounds coming from underneath your dash? Um, or is your heater not performing like it should? AC not performing like it should? Maybe, um, you know, it's cold on one side, hot on the other. Uh, well, you probably have uh, an issue with your heater blend door actuator. And uh, I'm gonna work on that today on my Explorer. I'm having issues with it. Uh, it's only blows cold air out on the passenger side. And, um, you know, these Explorers came with several different uh, types of climate control systems. I have the more complicated dual climate control system and the rear climate control system. So I'm gonna take everything apart and uh, show you how I get this fixed. Well, this Haynes manual has a uh, no replacement um, guide for these actuators, which is a joke because this is a common problem with this vehicle. First things first, we gotta take out this center console. So I'll show you how to do that now. On the front here, these are just a pressure fit. They pop out. I've removed all the linings. Uh, now I'm just gonna go for the obvious bolts. This one here, and then I've got four of them in here. These bolts inside of the cubby were a seven millimeter. The same seven millimeter for this bolt up front. These explorers have different types of um, rear sections here, but on mine here, I've got the flip down cup holder and um, the rear air vents. Um, but I just pulled on this and uh, the whole assembly just kind of pops out. Just like that. All right, I'm gonna have to uh, remove the uh, electrical connector here for the cigarette lighter. Uh, you can see here that um, this connector just has this little release tab here, and uh, you gotta press down on this to uh, depress it, and it'll release. And then like I uh, said, this, um, this section on mine, it just has these kind of press tabs here. Um, in a couple of different locations and you can see that um, that's all that's holding it in and it'll pull right out all right with the seat moved all the way forward um, you can see it reveals these bolts here and um, you can see you got one on each side there and remove those all right so i just wedged my screwdriver between this top section here and this and i just kind of pulled up and it uh, popped out Got to remove that uh, cigarette lighter plug again. Um, and you can see a little bit better shot of the release mechanism there. You just depress that and it pulls right out. All right, you got four more bolts here to remove. Seven millimeter is your size. All right, you got two more bolts here, 10 millimeter. All right, now I've got everything removed. Um, everything's free. Um, so I'm just gonna pull out this whole assembly here. All right, that wasn't as difficult as I thought it would be. Um, I didn't have any trouble doing that. It took me about uh, 15, 20 minutes. All right, now I uh, pried off this uh, front section here. It wasn't very difficult. You just gotta apply pressure with like a screwdriver and pull out. It's got little push tabs that hold it in place here. So um, yeah, pulls right out. All right, now I'm going to uh, swing the glove box out of the way. And you do that by just pressing in on the side here and then allowing it to flop down. Okay, you can see that um, everything is nice and exposed now. Uh, I'm probably gonna have to take off this piece here. Uh, but what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna try turning on the heater control system and seeing if I can hear exactly where that popping's coming from. I can see that there's a uh, actuator here that's like vacuum controlled. Don't think that's the one I'm looking for. Another one up here. Um, but I'm gonna take a look here and uh, see if I can hear where that popping sound is coming from.
All right, well, I, you can definitely hear the popping sound. It sounds like it's coming from behind somewhere in here. I don't think it's these vacuum actuators. Um, so uh, I'm gonna pull some more things apart here. All right, this one is in eight millimeter. And then, uh, yep, that one in the back right there too. All right, it looks in order to get this piece out, um, you gotta take out uh, these bolts. Looks like it's a 10 millimeter there in order to pull this back and slip it out. All right, that wasn't super easy to get out. I had to kind of twist and pull, and you can see I bent back the panel there a little bit, but it did come out. Just the two screws right there, and then you had to unhook some different points um, on this wiring harness, um, and now uh, this thing will pull free. This piece right here was just a pressure fit, and I was able just to wiggle it off. Once I got that, uh, the rest of the center console out, um, I was able to see that there was a couple more nuts here, 10 millimeters, easy to take this out. So I'm just gonna take this out. And then I'm gonna come around on this side and take that side out as well. I repeated that same process, uh, pulled out the bracket here and uh, pulled out this bent piece. Uh, now I have full access to everything underneath there. We'll see what's next. All right, so this bolt right here, um, I'm just removing that using a eight millimeter um, wrench and it's um, pretty easy to access from the bottom here. All right, right there, um, you can see this bolt right there. That's the one that gives you trouble. Um, yeah, so, um, so the service manual says that you're supposed to remove the dash to do this job, but no one wants to remove the dash. Um, you saw how I removed the other two bolts and the final bolt is right back here. You can barely see it, it's hard to focus on it, but you can see that I cut out um, this section right here. I drilled a hole and then I used my hacksaw to finish off the cut. And uh, that allows me access with this swivel socket to just um, sneak back in here and remove that bolt. Uh, pretty inconsequential inco because uh, once you got this glove box up, you won't see it. And it makes this uh, a lot more serviceable um, as this is a common problem on these explorers. Lesson learned, I took out this bolt. It's, uh, you know, the more brass color, not like the, um, you know, silver color that came out back here. And it was the wrong one. Um, so uh, you definitely need the swivel to take out the bottom right and the bottom, uh, top right uh, bolts. All right, so I created a, another service hole here. You can see that this is like a structural bracket for the dash, and there was already a uh, hole there. Uh, so I just drilled it out with a half inch drill bit, and uh, now my socket fits right through there, and I'm able to access the bolt. So I ended up drilling out this a little bit more. It's a structural bracket for the dash, and so it's not super critical. Um, but you've got to loosen up this vacuum actuator. Um, there is a total of uh, five bolts you have to take off. Uh, two for this and three for the, um, the blend door actuator. Um, and then I had to remove um, this bracket here. There was one bolt holding it on. Um, had to remove that so that I had access and then I just uh, snuck the actuator right out this direction and you can see I got it all removed that was a pretty tough job um, but got it removed uh, get one ordered now when I was uh, looking at this part the other day uh, the tab was broken off on mine so I'm here at the uh, junkyard and, uh, you know, I love coming to the junkyard because you can find these parts in perfect condition and they're super cheap and just kind of restore your vehicle back to original. I wouldn't recommend replacing these with like an aftermarket um, blend door. 
uh, because you know you saw how difficult it was to get it out um, you want to put a quality part back in there uh, so I couldn't find this on Rock Auto a lot of times Rock Auto will have um, motorcraft parts and you can get them for pretty cheap off of there uh, but they didn't have this one I went down to the Ford dealer and talked to the parts guy and he said that it was discontinued um, so they no longer are making this uh, blend door uh, but the good uh, news is that uh, they had it at another location and I was able to get it within a day um, so uh, I'm gonna replace this with a quality motorcraft part you can see the uh, part number there um, I can't tell if this one that came out of it was motorcraft. It, they both say ATC and they have the same number on it, um, but I don't see like a Ford stamp anywhere, so it's hard to know. Uh, but you can definitely see this one, this isn't moving, it's rigid, and this one is just flopping around. Um, I took this apart and the gears were stripped on the inside, so definitely my issue. All right, I got my new unit here. Um, I'm just gonna drop it right down in this hole here and try to just work it around so that I can get this tooth to line up and then see if I can bolt it up. All right, so I was able to get this new unit in place here. You can see it back there. It's just kind of, uh, I slipped it in. I've got the old unit here just so I can show you what I did. Now, this male piece, you've got to slip it in. It's pretty tough. Uh, you have to uh, kind of move around this uh, vacuum uh, actuator rod and really just work around uh, the unit to fit behind it before you can actually insert this into the female um, hold down there now of course this is a you know tooth that has to be aligned a certain way um, the female portion it'll swivel because it's hooked up to like a blend door and um, so it'll move down there um, the new unit is this piece is rigid on this one it's broken so it moves easily and so I wanted to leave that uh, you know it come it came like this straight up and down so when I slipped it in, um, I had to go in like this, work it behind the rod, and then just kind of line it up and just kind of grab the corner of that female piece and then twist it around and shove it in. Uh, it was pretty tough to do, but I would say it took me about 10 minutes to figure that out. All right, you can see that I got... Um the bolt on the upper right side of the unit installed. Um, it's the one on the left hand side, the silver one, not the brass. Um, and, you know, because I drilled these holes in this little unit right here, it was pretty easy to install. I just uh, used this um, quarter inch drive when the extension didn't even have to use a swivel, uh, but I did shove a piece of paper um, between the socket and the nut just to hold it in place. Um, you can also see that right back here, this nut right here, I was able to thread that in by hand. Uh, and then I just came in with my eight millimeter um, wrench here and just tightened it down. Now I didn't tighten these completely because I want to make sure I have a little wiggle room to get everything started. Uh, now I'm gonna attempt to uh, go down this hole right here um, and I don't know if you can see back there, but you can kind of see it back there. I need to get a screw in that hole and that's probably the toughest one. You can see that uh, in order to hold this screw in place, I just shoved a piece of paper in there um, and uh, this is pretty solid now. It's not going anywhere. Um, I'll try to reach it back in there and uh, thread it into the hole. Well, you can barely see it down there. It wasn't too bad. I'd say it took me about uh, five attempts and I was able to get it started and uh, we're in business. All right, so I just installed this piece here. Um, there's like a tooth right there. You got to slide it in and then over this rod and then one bolt right back there. 
Um, I just used uh, this uh, swivel setup again, shoved a piece of paper in on the bolt and then slipped it, slipped it back um, behind here and uh, went right in. All right, it's time to plug the uh, unit in. You can see it sits back there kind of like this. And then you've got the plug right here. Um, so we're just gonna have to twist it around so that it goes in like that. Getting that plug in was actually pretty tough. Um, yeah, I think I spent about 10 minutes trying to get it in there. I just really had to do it by feel. But then, like, once I kind of figured out where things were at, it just popped right in. Got that uh, bolt on the top left there installed for this vacuum actuator. And then um, up here as well. Um, you know, uh, I saw in another video and they said you had to have, like, the integrated swivel socket um, with the eight millimeter. Um, I didn't find that that was the case. Um, you know, of course I made quite a few other relief holes in my unit to do it. Um, but I had success with, um, this snap on swivel here and this, uh, snap on wrench. I was able to get everything, uh, tightened down. All right. Moment of truth here. I don't hear any clicking. That's good news. Well, I'm getting heat out of uh, both sides now, front and passenger. Um, I'm not getting any popping sounds from underneath the dash, so install was a success. That was a pretty tough job, but got her done. Go ahead and reinstall the ducting and the brace here on both sides. And with the uh, ducting all back installed, I got hot air coming out down here. That install is a success. All right, reinstall this base piece, making sure that you have it nice and tight up against here to give you a good seal. Um, Re-put on back your wiring and get ready to slide the console back in. All right, you're gonna wanna install the uh, center console. I actually chose to go to the junkyard because uh, mine was cracked over here a little bit. And these are really cheap at the junkyard. I got a whole new unit and um, this entire assembly comes apart. Like each side is independent and I just used the best parts so that I could have a really nice uh, center console. So you're gonna install the four bolts here, uh, the two up here, and then there's um, some push pins down there and then four bolts inside of here. Make sure and remember to uh, plug in your cigarette lighter. And then this is just a press fit. And looking solid. Don't forget these bolts back here. Um, and then uh, plug in your cigarette lighter for the rear. And then um, this piece is just a press fit. And just make sure everything connects where it's supposed to. One final thing here. Um, I popped this on, but it's got these bolts and, you know, you can slide them out uh, when you're pulling this off, but then to put it back on, it just was easier to take this off and then screw them on so I have a nice tight fit. Uh, the bolts on this piece to take off were uh, five millimeter. All finished up. Good to go.